DigiKey and Adafruit bring Present. you High on MPI. It's I on MPI time. That's right. I got my eye on this MPI. Renaissance, which I hope I'm saying correctly. It's a, a cool company that makes all sorts of microcontrollers, microtronics. I believe it's Japanese. And uh, they make some neat things. And this week, we're going to be talking about a very NPI, NPI. It's like a, a whole, the concept of it is even an NPI, which is MRAM. Dun, 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 dun. The M. 30XX series of MRAM. Mm. And I think what I'm going to do by, you know, talking about this MRAM is explaining why you need MRAM in general, why you need any kind of memory, and why this memory is different. So there's going to be a little bit of a long story. Okay. But while you're listening, go check out the DigiKey page um, for the M3000 series MRAM, and they have all these specs and data sheets and documents, and it uh, looks like uh, IDT, which is, I think, a subsidiary or merged with the Renaissance, um, in Integrated Data Technologies, they have the coolest logo. Uh, I've always thought so since, like, college. Their logo's the best. Okay. okay. All, All right. right. So, so you're going to tell a story. I'm going to tell a story. So let's go, yeah, there. So this is a, just the data sheet of a totally different Renaissance chip, the, the RX V3. It's a 32-bit CPU. It's, uh, it looks like it's an ARM core. It's got uh, M4. It's got DSP instructions. And on the left, you see memory. And there's a couple different kinds of memory. There's program flash, and there's SRAM. And those are the, the two. And then there's kind of different kinds of SRAM with ECC and there's standby. But basically, you've got flash and SRAM. And when you have a microcontroller, um, those are the two kinds of memories you get. You get program flash, which is where you store your code, and that's kind of like written only once in a while. Usually you like write it when you bootload it or you write it when you program it. And then the SRAM is where you um, put your like working memory, like while you're working on files or parsing data, that's where you put your, your variables, your heap or stack variables, while you're working on them. So it's kind of like your workspace whereas um, the flash is like your instruction or storage space. So um, historically, um, this is what chips used to look like. Uh, the flash memory inside, um, they would have SRAM, they wouldn't have very much. And the, the thing about SRAM is you can write and read it basically in one instruction, maybe two instructions, but you can write it very, very quickly. SRAM, you write it, you read it, and it's like nearly instant. Um, it's very optimized. Um, you don't have a ton of it, you usually have a couple kilobytes, but again, it's super speedy and you can read and write any location you want at any time, which is another uh, really cool benefit. Um, so chips would have some SRAM and they'd also have some registers, but uh, for you know the CPU working, and then the, this is what the chip would look like and there would be uh, EEPROM. It's UV erasable programmable read-only memory and uh, to erase it, you'd have to actually put it under a UV light. So this was clear. You could see the chip. There's a, like a crystal quartz window because you'd literally put it under a UV bulb for like five to ten minutes and it would erase it. So then you could write it again with your new program. And erasing would take like five to ten minutes. So it's like you really have to think about your code. And then flash memory got invented, um, which is what's used in this chip. So you don't see EEPROM chips really anymore because people came up with a way of doing flash memory, which is basically, you've got the EEPROM, but you don't need a UV lamp. It does it on its own. It, it erases itself and it programs itself. However, there's still one downside. Um, with flash memory, even though you can read it very fast, writing it um, is very slow. And erasing it is very slow. And so if, you're, if you need something that's like, well, like SRAM, for example, you can put stuff in it, but when you turn off the power, it goes away, whereas flash, it stays, so it's like non-volatile. So you, you know, if you have a microcontroller program or project, and you want to do some data logging, for example, you want to, uh, you know, store data from a sensor or a GPS, you have to, um, you can't keep it in the SRAM because when you turn it off, the data is gone, and you can't store it in the program flash because it's where your program data is, and it's kind of bad taste to stick um, data log memory in the program memory. So what you do is for example, you get an external SD card, right? An SD card or a TransFlash card or a micro SD card, as seen here on um, this Ada Logger. Uh, these are the same things you use in your phone, your game station, you know, your GPS, what have you. 
They hold gigabytes of memory and inside is a flash chip and a controller. And you can store like a ton of data, but again, um, it's not very fast to write. Well, one thing that people notice is that when you write to these cards, you have to write them in blocks of like 512 bytes. And it can be 250 milliseconds up to as each um, block is erased. They have, the microcontroller has to erase that flash as a block and then write it. And so if you're trying to stream fast data logging, um, an SD card actually sometimes won't be able to do the job very well. Oftentimes you have to you know, do caching where you have the memory, you, know, you have the data stored in SRAM, and then when you get to a full block, then you write it with DMA and then in the background. But it gets like, very complicated very quickly, and it's very easy to lose memory. Uh, lose your data if you know the memory gets unplugged or if it gets turned off in between this caching state. Uh, the other option you have is to use onboard SPI flash, and we do that actually on our feather boards when we use Circuit Python because we have a little disk drive. It's only two megabytes of SPI flash. Um, it's much smaller than an SD card. It's much less expensive as well. It's only like thirty cents or so because it's just a little QSPI chip. A little eight SOIC chip, you solder it on, power ground, some data lines. And again, you can read fairly fast from it, but you can't write fast to it, and you can't write to any location you want. Uh, you have to erase the block manually. And this is even kind of, in a sense, worse than SD cards because the blocks might be larger than 512 bytes. They might actually be like, you know, a couple kilobytes. So you could end up having to deal with like four kilobytes that you have to. If you want to write data in the middle of a four kilobyte block, you have to read that whole block out into SRAM, erase it, modify the data in SRAM, and then write it back, which you know is really annoying. Um, means that you can't stream data very quickly to it, um, and also means you have to have this like buffer of RAM. So there's a lot of like management that you have to do. Okay, so you're, you're all like fists to the sky. Why? Why us? Why can't we have a fast way? to write to a non-volatile memory, memory that keeps remembering after the power's off, but doesn't have this annoyance of like block-based, you have to erase and takes, you know, 250 milliseconds. Okay, well, you're in luck because it exists and it's called MRAM. <laughs> so this is MRAM. MRAM is different than uh, flash memory, which uses a uh, capacitive charge stored on uh, MOSFETs that are floating, floating gate MOSFETs. Um, MRAM instead uses magnetic spin of a material. And this is kind of like a, a demonstration. There's, there's a permanent magnet and um, an electromagnet. And then I guess it, it can sense the magnetic and also it can uh, write or read the polarity to this little bit and um, set it to be north or south, one or zero. And the cool thing about it is it's incredibly fast. Uh, it's got the same read speeds as, you know, flash, but it's got the same write speeds as read speeds. Like you don't have to um, erase, and you don't have to wait. You can just write something instantly, and you know the magnet flips, and the bit is stored, and you can write any bit anywhere, in any location at any time. So it's like truly random access writing. All right. Okay. So uh, here's this like lovely demonstration of it and basically the deal is is that you're gonna pay more for MRAM because it's a new technology and it's very advanced and there's not like every possible size of memory available but if you need to have something with very fast read and write speeds like basically like as fast as the QSPI or SPI protocol uh, MRAM will do the job for you and it will do it quite well and there are some situations where people are like, I really need to be able to write about two megabytes worth of data very, very fast uh, into non-volatile storage. This will definitely do the job for you. There's another thing that this is good for, although it's not designed for this, I will say that there is a community of people who do CubeSats as students. Um, right. And they basically make electronics, they put a microcontroller on it, and they shoot into space. And one of the first things you learn when you start putting things in space is that once you're outside of, of our atmosphere, um, you're not protected from these high energy, uh, yeah, like electron beams that can go in and they frazzle your flash memory. Um, this is a really big problem. This is why people have rad hardened electronics. 
And flash memory is extremely susceptible to this. And so oftentimes you'll have a board with like multiple like flash chips because if one gets fried, you know, you have another one um, that can kind of kick in and be like, hey, I'm the one that, that's working if you triple redundancy. But NRAM has an interesting property that even though this is not rad hardened and it's not certified for space use, MRAM survives this kind of experience a lot better. And so you'll see a lot of CubeSat boards use MRAM um, and they won't use the, like the space hardened stuff that's thousand dollars. They'll use this stuff that's like 20 bucks. And um, again, they can store data, read, and even use it as external um, program memory as well. So it's, it's a nice, reliable for CubeSat use memory. Okay, well, there's two uh, things that we do. Yes. During IMPI. First, you can get on DigiKey. Here's a short URL. Yes. It's super new. It's so new, the product photo is not in there. This was, it actually just went in like yesterday. The short URL is Z9C51V. Um, that's the DigiKey short URL. And we also have a one minute video from the manufacturer. Well, do you want to show it on the, the over okay. first? I'm sorry, we have three things. Sorry, I just We I got the DigiKey site. I you had got a so video, much I had to and then, emote. Then you, got, then you got this. Okay, yeah. so this is what it looks like. Um, so it comes in tape and reel. It's it's like SOIC, but it's not actually SOIC. It's SOIC packaging, but it's actually kind of a DFN. Um, but you can see here I brought, you know, this is a board that has um, a Q-Spy flash on it, and you can see that this is the same footprint. It's just a little flatter and thinner. And um, these, I think, are 2 megabyte. Sorry, it says eight meg. It says eight MB. I don't know if that's eight megabyte or uh, eight megabit. Probably eight megabit. Uh, so one megabyte of data. Watch out for that. Um, RAM is often specified in bits, not bytes. So you have to divide by eight to get um, kilobytes and megabytes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's like amazingly small and thin. And I think that especially for people doing CubeSat or or high altitude ballooning, I think this could be a really nice, low cost, easy to use chip. Uh, with a ton of storage available on it. You can even store little images. One megabyte is quite a bit of storage data. Yeah, and in Discord, uh, Scott's talking about the different boards that CircuitPython have uh -huh. because of the SAT folks. Yeah. Um, so um, Max Holiday was the one who did that from Stanford. That's right. And we had him on the show not too long ago. And he was the one who like pointed out, like, oh, yeah, like MRAM. One of the things that he wanted to do was the SAMD51 chip uh, that we have CircuitPython support for. Uh, can boot from an external QSPY flash memory. Yeah. And so he's like, oh, this could be really good because one of our problems is the flash memory gets corrupted. And so yeah. if we could have the program in this, you know, uh, non-susceptible memory and it would run from that, I was like, yeah, I think you can absolutely do that. We're going to so show this video. And uh, one thing I want to say is, like, this is what engineers want. This is the most advanced stuff, cutting edge, shown to you live talking about it real examples this is what INMPI is about this is like how do you find yourself how do you know about this this is the yeah. segment this is why this is why we really like doing this every week it's just neat because it's like it's like i didn't even know that like i, I literally like i saw this on digikey.com slash new i was like what is mram like i've never heard of it i kind of guessed it was magnetic but i was like yeah, cool. what how does it work what does it do so i i, I looked into it and it, was, it there's actually some thoughts that um ssds are going to move to MRAM because again of that that write delay problem that is unavoidable in flash and you don't have an MRAM. So in long term, not anytime soon, but you know maybe look long term we have to go to space anyways. So we may as well do we'll this. We'll probably all have MRAM disk drives. Yeah. We actually go back to magnetic, right? We went from magnetic to flash and now we're yeah. going back to well magnetic. we're going back to mainframe sort of so okay. Um, all right, this video. So we'll play this video and then um, that'll be high MPI.
Yeah.